Hi, and thanks for choosing Planet Rentals for your next outdoor adventure. Uh, first off, we're going to go over some general trailer information that is pertinent to all of our different camping trailers, and then we'll go specifically over the camping trailer that you have reserved. First of all, when you come for your reservation, make sure you plan enough time to get paperwork filled out and the trailer hooked up. Uh, when appointments are rushed, we always find that then, you know, some information is skipped over or, you know, we're not as thorough as we'd like to be. So make sure you plan plenty of time for your pickup appointment. Secondly, make sure that you have your driver's license and the insurance card for the vehicle that will be towing our trailer available and ready for us. We'll need copies of those along with the contract that you sign. Now it's important that you know what type of site you're going to with the trailer. Uh, many sites have water, power, and sewer hookups, and many sites have none of that at all. And how the trailer works and operates is quite dependent on that, and so you'll want to know those differences before you head out there. And then I wanted to go over some general driving tips for you. When you're towing a trailer, it's always very important to drive at a very slow and safe speed. Um, you know, it's just not worth pushing. You know, plan some extra time in your trip so that you have plenty of time to get where you're going. It's easier on our trailer and easier on your tow vehicle if you just take it easy. Secondly, because you'll be a longer rig, you need to make sure that you're careful when you're cornering. You need to take corners a little bit wider and you know plan for that sort of thing it's always smart to know exactly where you're going have you know good directions or have driven there before because it's hard to make evasive maneuvers or u-turns and that sort of thing when you have a trailer in tow and then whenever you're backing up the trailer make sure that you have someone there helping you back up uh, to help you make sure you don't of course run into any obstacles and that sort of thing and then uh, when you're setting up the trailer, you want to make sure that you're being careful of anything that's overhead on the trailer or around the sides of it. Many of our trailers have slide outs or pop downs and that sort of thing that extend from the side of the trailer. So before you get it all set up, you want to make sure there's plenty of clearance all around the trailer. And then also we want you to really treat our trailers well. We have what we feel the best trailers and the best pricing out there of any RV dealer. And a big part of that is because we really feel like we have the best renters. So we do put some responsibility on you to make sure you take care of our units. Uh, you know, we suggest taking your shoes off when you go inside the trailer. That really just helps with cleanup. It helps maintain the floor and the, you know, the furniture, all that sort of thing. We suggest that you try not to take the trailer off-road. We suggest that you keep it nice and swept and clean. And then, you know, help with eliminating horseplay and other rough activities that may happen in or outside the trailer just to help you know keep it nicer and cleaner for those that come after you and then also wanted to note that all of our trailers have a spare tire on them of course but that spare tire is not intended for long distance driving that spare tire is intended to get you somewhere to get a tire repaired and replaced so that um, you know you can continue on with your trip so please don't plan on using the spare tire to drive any extended distance if something were to happen to one of the original tires on the trailer. We of course keep all those tires in great working condition for you. Now we'll go over the general hookup of the trailer to the tow vehicle here. So the first thing we're going to do is lower the trailer down onto the ball of the vehicle. And then every trailer comes with a safety pin. This is what's going to ensure that the trailer is locked on to the truck securely. If the pin goes through, you know you've got it set up correctly and it can't come undone from the ball of the vehicle. Next we have the safety chains and they um, have hooks that clip onto the, the security hole on the vehicle. I like to cross the chains once or twice with one going this way and the other one going this direction. Next is the hookup for the lights on the trailer. All of our trailers have this seven pin RV connection um, and so you need to make sure your vehicle can accommodate that type of plug. And then lastly is the breakaway cable for the trailer. What this does is if the trailer were to come unhooked from the vehicle somehow, this cable will pull and activate the brakes on the trailer so that it doesn't keep rolling away. All right, and then if you're using one of our equalizer hitches, you'll want to lower the trailer down onto the ball of the tow vehicle, just enough to get that pin locked in, and then you want to swing the arms up onto the side of the trailer and lock those in. Then lower the rest of the trailer weight down onto the tow vehicle. What that does is help transfer some of the weight of the trailer up to the front tires of the tow vehicle for cornering and braking, 
and it also helps with sway control as you're driving down the road. Now be mindful of the things that you put inside the trailer. If you're using one of our equalizer hitches, make sure that does not go inside the trailer on the linoleum. We've had quite a few trailers damaged that way, as well as you know generators and other rough equipment like bikes and things like that. Please be careful with the flooring of our trailers. All right, once you arrive at your campsite, the first thing you're gonna need to do is level the trailer. So with the level that's provided with the trailer, you'll wanna Check for side-to-side -side levelness using the back bumper of the trailer. So you just put that on there. And then, uh, depending on which side is high or low, you'll raise that side up using the tires of the trailer and the blocks that we provide. With these blocks, you'll tuck them up underneath the trailer tire. And back up onto them. If you needed to go even higher, you can build a little ramp using these blocks go even too high here. Once you back up onto the blocks, then you check your levelness again and make sure you're nice and level. And then once your vehicle's level side to side, you want to chalk the tires using the included chalks. Just one on each side of the tire, tuck them in nice and firm, and then the same on the other side of the trailer on one of the tires. Okay, now that you're level side to side and the tires are chalked on the trailer really well, it's now time to unhook it from your tow vehicle and check levelness front to back. To check that levelness, you can just place the level here on the front A-frame of the trailer, and then you're gonna use the tongue jack, raised or lowered, in order to level the trailer front to back. Now you can drop the stabilizers that are on the trailer. Uh, there's a provided crank that you connect here. You just tap it to the end and just crank those stabilizers down until they're on the ground. Uh, once they touch the ground, I usually do another two cranks to support a little bit of the weight of the trailer, uh, but you don't support much of the weight. In fact, these stabilizers are not used to level the trailer whatsoever. They're just used to help eliminate some of the rocking motion of the trailer when you're walking around inside. Now when your trip's over and it's time to hook up and leave, you're gonna do all of those steps we went over just in reverse. So first you're gonna raise those stabilizer jacks that we lowered. Then you're gonna hook up to the vehicle and of course raise the tongue jack all the way. Then remove the chocks that are on the tires on both sides of the trailer. Then pull the trailer off of any leveling blocks side to side and you're good to go. All right, we're gonna go over the setup here of our Octane toy hauler. Located on the front of the trailer are two propane tanks. By convention, we have you use the passenger side tank first and then roll over to the driver's side tank if needed. To access the propane tanks, you do need to remove the cover here, and then we'll show you how to roll over between the tanks. Now located here in front of the tanks is the selector switch. This is what's gonna roll over between tanks. You see the lever here is pointed at this tank, which indicates this is the tank we're using. You'd switch it all the way back over and point it at this tank if you needed to roll over to the second tank. To turn on the propane, you would just open up the top valve on either of the tanks all of the way. Also here on the front of the trailer are the two batteries. Now there's nothing you need to do to the batteries here. If you do have a generator or full-time power at your campsite, when the trailer's plugged in, it will automatically charge the batteries in addition to running any of the things that you needed to run inside the trailer. Now also on the front of the trailer is a ladder to access the roof. We ask you please not to use the ladder and please do not get on the roof of the trailer. Now the sewer hose is located here on the front corner of the trailer on the driver's side. Located here towards the front of the trailer on the driver's side is the sewer outlet. If you're at a site with full hookups that has sewer accommodations, you can connect the sewer when you get to your site and run it to the designated hole in the ground. Then any water you use inside the trailer or any sewage can get flushed down just as you use it. Otherwise you would use this outlet to drain the tanks at the end of your trip. To attach the hose here, and just remove the cap, and the hose goes on just kind of over the notches here on the sewer tube. Now, the black handle here is for your sewage. You would drain that first, and you'd do that by pulling the handle out towards you. Once that's finished draining, then you would pull the gray handle here towards you and drain out the gray water. The gray water is your sinks and your shower. After those have both drained, you can run plenty of fresh water down the toilet and sinks and showers to wash everything out. Now this is the service panel access for the fridge and the service panel access for the water heater. Now both of these appliances turn on from inside the trailer, so you shouldn't need to access either of those. 
Right next to those here is the city water connection. This would be used if you have full-time water hookups at your campsite. What you would do is screw one end of the hose right onto the trailer, and then the other end of the hose will screw onto the spigot at your campsite. Now we supply this pressure regulator here that will go between this water spigot and the hose to regulate the amount of pressure that goes into the trailer water lines. Next we've got our hot air vent for our heater inside the trailer. I mention that because it does become hot to the touch and you want to be careful of its surroundings. Next is your water tank inlet. This is where you would fill the water tank for the trailer if you don't have water hookups at your site. Just remove the cap here and you can stick a hose up to the inlet and fill it until it bubbles back out at you at which point you know it's full. Now all of that water is going to go into the fresh water tank that's actually located underneath the trailer. In order to pump that water up to the faucets, shower and toilet throughout the trailer, you'll have to run the water pump and we'll show you how to turn that on inside the trailer. Now this is the storage cubby for the power cord to the trailer. It just pushes right on in there. Now we supply an adapter that plugs the cord into any standard outlet, but many of the hookup sites have this 30 amp plug. And so you're set either way. This tank is just for the built-in generator that's on this trailer. So both of them would need to be returned with the same amount of fuel as when you took the trailer. Now to open up the ramp on the back of the trailer for loading toys, you would just lift up the lever here, give it a half turn, repeat on the other side, and then tilt it on down. To open up the steps on the trailer, just pull both steps towards you and then flip down the bottom step. Of course you'd want to make sure they get stored securely before you travel. Located right inside the front door are a bunch of the switches to control a lot of the things in the trailer. First you have an outdoor light here, your indoor lights here, and then you have um, a speaker selection for your FM, AM, CD player that chooses either your inside or outside speakers. Next you have your generator start and stop button. To start the generator you'd actually hold down on the stop button until the light turns red. Then you can press and hold on the start button to start it up. To stop the generator just hold down on the stop side. Located directly above that, we mentioned the two different fuel tanks on the trailer. This will show you the level of those by turning it on and then selecting either the generator gas tank or the fuel station tank. Now again, the fuel need to be returned at the level at which you took the trailer. Moving over here, you have the awning control to extend or retract the awning. Now just a word about awning use. Awnings are a good amenity to have, but they damage very easily. If ever there's a breeze or any wind outside, it just becomes a huge parasail. So if there's a, any sort of weather, make sure you put it up. Even if it's raining a little bit, the awnings are notorious for collecting water and just not being able to support that weight. So use the awning very wisely if you choose to use it. Next is the switch to control the beds in the back of the trailer. Pressing those switches up or down will move the beds up or down. Right inside the door on the opposite side are some more of the controls for the trailer. First you have your switch for your water pump. Again that will be used if you don't have full-time water at your site. The pump will run to pump the water from the tank underneath the trailer up to the faucets and it'll actually kick on and off as needed when those lines are pressurized. But if you're ever not using the water in the trailer just turn that switch off. Next is your water heater. There's a switch to run your water heater off gas and a switch to run it off electric. If you wanted to run your water heater and heat that water off of gas, you would flip on this switch here and then it would run it off propane. This would heat the water using electric power. Now you'd only want to use the electric power if you had full-time electric hookups at your campsite. Next you have your meters for your gray water, your black water, and your fresh water, and also your battery meter. And it's actually in this order. Battery meter, fresh water meter, black water, gray water. Next you have an outdoor light switch and a switch that actually controls the radio on or off. Moving down here a little bit lower you have a light for the back cargo ramp. And then you have a switch that turns on the ability to raise and lower the beds that we talked about a minute ago. So this switch needs to be on in order for the beds to raise and lower using the switch on the other side of the door. 
Okay, I've turned on the first switch to activate the bed control and now I'm going to press and hold the switch to lower the beds. It's important to note that no weight should go onto those beds until they're in their full low position. Now there's two identical beds and sofas on both sides of the trailer here and they both operate the same. You unclip them from the wall here and just fold them on down. Now that would be if you wanted to use it as a bed or you can jackknife it up as a sofa. Right above the passenger side sofa is the DVD player for the TV and the TV is up here near the front of the trailer above the kitchen sink. And right below it is the AM, FM radio and CD player. Now the TV and the DVD player will only operate if you have plug-in power at your campsite or if you're running a generator. Now the stove on the trailer is going to work off of propane. In order to light it, you're just going to turn a knob and then spark the corresponding burner with a lighter. Now there's two identical tables that go here for each of the couches. The table legs just go right here into the ground. There's three legs for each table. And then the table just rests right on top. Now here on the fridge are the controls to run the fridge off plug-in power, which would be flipping this switch to auto, or to run the fridge off of propane, which would be flipping the switch to gas. Now when you're running the fridge on gas, you'll notice this yellow light that comes on here in the bottom. If your gas is not on, or if you run out of gas, or perhaps there's an air bubble in the line, that yellow light will start flashing, indicating that there's problem. You would remedy the problem, flip the fridge off for 10 or 15 seconds, and then go back to gas to ignite. Then over here on the right hand side is the temperature control setting. We suggest setting 3 or 4. Located up here by the kitchen sink is the thermostat that controls the air conditioner or the heater inside the trailer. To activate the heater, you would flip this switch to the right, and to activate the air conditioner, you'd flip the switch to the left. Then you would use the temperature dial up here to set the desired temperature, and either the heater or the air conditioner would kick on or off to maintain that temperature. Now the air conditioner, the microwave, the TV, and the DVD player all require a generator or full-time power in order to run. To flush the toilet, step on the handle located on the front. In order to put some water in the toilet bowl, if you do not have water hookups, you need to turn on the water pump in order to pump that water up to the toilet. Now we provide RV safe toilet paper, and this is the only thing that should be put into the toilet. We don't want any other cleaning supplies, paper towels, anything of that nature going into the toilet. Only our RV safe toilet paper. We also supply chemical for the toilet. Now these chemicals are just individual packets that can be flushed down the toilet. We suggest one every other day that just helps break down the waste and help control the odor. Now located here under the front bed is the storage for the trailer. So your hose, your table legs, all the sort of things you need, your chalks, your leveling blocks are all going to be located here under the front bed. Now with each trailer we supply a user manual and a cleaning checklist. If you had any questions on the trailer, of course refer to the user manual. But the cleaning checklist is good. It gives you an idea of things to go over and clean before you return the trailer. And as a general rule of thumb, we would like the trailer to come back as clean as when you took it. Now we also offer a few suggestions like kicking off your shoes when you come in the trailer, being mindful of what you bring into the trailer, uh, such as equalizer hitches, cargo, that sort of thing. Of course you'll be bringing your toys in, but it's just important to keep the floor swept and do those few little things that will just help maintain our trailer and help with the wear and tear. Thanks again for choosing Planet Rentals for your next camping trip. We hope you really enjoy our trailers and that you have a great time.